Howdy y'all, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today I'm gonna take you along with processing my first deer ever. So I shot that nubbin buck and buck about six or seven days ago. I had the meat deboned and I've had it on ice for about five days now. So I've got them in some Ziploc bags here right now. I'm going to go ahead and chop them up. I'm pretty much making burger meat out of everything except for the back strap. Being my first time processing, I just figured that was the easiest way to do it. I would have taken you through the deboning process, but it was really pretty ugly. So I didn't get the meat off the bone the way I would have hoped, but it doesn't really matter since I am making burger. For this, you're gonna need a vacuum sealer. I just have a basic Nesco sealer. I bought it on Amazon. And then I also bought the rolls of bags because it's cheaper than buying bags pre-sealed already. So what I did earlier is I went ahead and got about 12 to 15 bags here. I double sealed it on the bottom and I'll probably double seal it on the top when I'm done. So what I'm gonna do is roll the bag outward so that I can throw the meat in there and not worry about it getting all over the outside of the bag. You're also gonna wanna scale I use this because I want to make my bags about five to 10 pounds so that when I go to process it in burger, that it's the exact amount ready to go. You'll need a sharp boning knife. And I'll tell you that when I was deboning the deer, having a sharp knife is very important. I've got a tub here for any of the trash or scraps as I'm finishing cleaning it up. I'm really gonna try and get all the fat, all the silver skin, everything off of it. So I may lose a little bit of meat, but for my first time processing, I'd rather make sure I have some good burger meat. So I don't have all the supplies to make sausage and burger and all the seasoning yet. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting them into strips. I'm cleaning it up and just cutting it into strips, putting it in the bag and going ahead and freezing it. So that way when I pull it out and ready to process it, that I can just throw it into the grinder and it's good to go. So you really want to get all this silver skin and fat off here on the top. All right, so this is mostly cleaned up. So I'm going to cut it into strips. Depending on the size of your grinder will depend on how big your strips are. Something about this size will work pretty well. So once you get a bag and you fill it with about five pounds, you can unravel it, open up your vacuum sealer and go ahead and vacuum seal it. And if you have a lucky volunteer like I do, you can have them help you out and make things go a little bit quicker. You should do that first, that gets all the air out. So once you have it sealed up, you can go ahead and write what it is and it's ready for the freezer. And then you'll just continue with that process until you're done with all your meat. Howdy y'all, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. You probably just watched the video of me cutting up the deer, cutting it into cubes and pretty much getting it ready to grind. So today I'm gonna be grinding up some of that deer and I'm gonna be taking a stab at making some jalapeno cheese snack sticks. Now I've watched quite a few videos on this and this is my first time doing it. So if you see anything that I'm doing wrong or that you do differently or have any suggestions for me, please feel free to leave a comment below. One thing I don't see in a lot of videos that I watched, and I don't know if they're just skipping this step because they don't think they need to show it or people just don't do it, is they don't seem to sanitize all their equipment before they use it. And I've done a little bit of beer brewing in the past and I know that is a huge step in that process. And for that reason, I'm gonna take the time and sanitize all my equipment. And part of that is I'm also giving out some of this meat as gifts. I really wanna make sure I give them a high quality meat. So to do that, I'm using this commercial sanitizer here. You mix it in with some water and put all your equipment in it for about 30 seconds or so. 
pulled out and you let it dry. What you're gonna need for this process is you'll need a grinder. I bought this on Amazon. I think it was about $150, $170. Comes with all the tools you need. You can use this to stuff it as well. But I went ahead and bought a stuffer by itself. I wanna say this was like $120 or so on Amazon. And then I bought some of these commercial food grade tubs so that I can kind of transfer the meat back and forth through that. But for this sanitizer, you'll need a gallon of water per one ounce of the sanitizer. I'm gonna put two gallons for two ounces in here so that I can get it at a level where I can submerge all of my equipment. All right, so once you have your mix of one ounce to one gallon, you can go ahead and start dropping your stainless steel pieces into this mixture. So while this stuff's soaking, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the seasoning I'm going to be using. I've heard a lot about the Legs Old Plantation seasonings. And I've actually processed a little bit of burger meat with a couple different types of their seasoning already this year. And I've enjoyed it quite a bit, so I'm confident that this will be pretty good. So this package says it seasons 25 pounds of meat. It has pretty much everything you need, the cure, all the spices, to be able to make snack sticks. I also bought these 22 millimeter collagen casings. This is what I will be using to stuff the snack sticks with. So as you pull these out, you can go ahead and set them on your towel over here to dry. You want them to air dry is what the direction is saying. So now I'm gonna do my next batch. I will also be using my Pit Boss smoker to be able to smoke these snack sticks. If you haven't already checked out my video on the Pit Boss smoker, click the link up here and check that video out. This guy is pretty big, so what I'm gonna do for this is I put it on one side for one minute and then I'll flip it over to the other side for another minute. Once all your equipment is out, you'll wanna let that just air dry. And one thing I also like to sanitize is all the tubs because the meat's actually gonna be sitting in that. So I'm gonna take this first tub off that has all the liquid in it. And I'm gonna do this over the sink because it may get a little messy. I don't know if I'll use all three tubs, but I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize those now. So what I like to do is I will pour a little of this liquid into one of the tubs and just kind of swish it around for about 30 seconds, move it to the next tub and let the other one dry. Now that I have everything nice and sanitized, once all this stuff dries, I'm gonna put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes or an hour. You really wanna work with the, your meat and everything as cold as possible. Otherwise, it'll just start to get kinda slimy and mushy on the meat, and it'll make it a lot harder to grind and work with. As far as the sanitizing solution that you have in this bucket, I'm gonna save this bucket with the solution in it, because when you're done with everything, you wanna go ahead and clean all your equipment again, and then put it back in the sanitizing solution before you put it up. Because if you don't do that, working with raw meat just has a lot of bacteria and stuff that could stick, stick around and hang with all your equipment and you really wanna avoid that as much as possible. That being said, once I get this stuff in the freezer and I pull the meat out, I'll show you all how I get the process started. So I've got my meat out here. As you can see, I had to end up putting it into two containers because I had so much. You can see that it's still pretty frozen, which is perfect. You want it to be pretty much on the verge of being frozen to go through the grinder. So you don't see it here because it's on the bottom, but under it I've got some pork shoulder in here to add a little bit of fat. So I've done about a 33% ratio of pork shoulder to venison. So I have eight and a half pounds or so of pork shoulder and about 16 and a half pounds of venison getting me right around that 24 pound mark the seasonings for 25 i'm still going to use the bag i just don't want to open up another bag of something just to get a pound out of it 
So I'm not following the instructions on the bag. I'm using some instructions from videos that I watched and I like to pour the seasoning onto the meat first before it even goes through the first grind. I feel like it's a little bit easier. I don't have a meat mixer to be able to mix all the seasoning in that well. So I feel like you get a good mix of all your meat when you grind it through with the seasoning on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the pork and venison. So I'm gonna put about half of it here and here. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. All right, we'll pour the rest. There may be a little seasoning in at the bottom. You'll just have to make sure af as you go through your grinds, you get that all picked up into your meat. The seasoning packet did not come with the cure. So I just had to run real quick and grab some curing salt from Academy. So it's the same process here. We'll need one ounce for 25 pounds. So I'm gonna get that measured out. I have an ounce measured out and I'll put half in this one and half in here. So we'll get that cure and the seasoning all mixed in here. So this will all get mixed as it goes through the grinds. I'm gonna end up doing three grinds on this, two on a coarse, or sorry, one on a coarse grit, one on a fine grit. For this first grind, you'll see that, you know, I have these long strips. So I'll take the meat pretty well and just suck it right up. I don't think I'll need the plunger really for this first grind. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. You should put a couple pieces of meat in there so it's not grinding dry. Now that I have the first grind done on course, I'm actually gonna split this meat and take half of it from this batch. And half from this other batch so that I can try and get a nice even grind with the seasoning and all the fat mixture over the course of the 25 pounds. I'm gonna just mix it up a little bit more to try and get the seasoning and the fat mixed around. So now we're gonna to wanna to switch to the fine plate. There may be a bunch of gunk in here. You know, take a look at it and see if you think any of it's uh, some silver skin or some fat or anything that's kinda of clunked up there that you think you may need to remove. Now we'll take the coarse plate and we're gonna run this through twice on the coarse plate. If your meat is uh, not quite cold enough, which mine is plenty cold, it actually struggled getting through the grinder a little bit on that round was how cold it was. But if yours is not cold enough, you can always throw it in uh, the freezer for 30 minutes to an hour to make sure it's cold to go through this next batch. So on this batch, what we're gonna do is take, you know, handfuls, just go ahead and set some up here and we'll make little small uh, kind of meatballs to try and feed down into there. That'll make it a little bit easier going through. We are done with our second batch. I did the half and half thing again. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grind it one more time through the fine grit here and then we'll be ready to stuff. All right, so I've gone through the grinder with the fine twice. You can see it's very sticky. So what I'm gonna do now, and the instructions on the package said you would do this before when you mix the seasoning in. What I read, it was easier to do it this way, but I'm gonna add some water in about two cups for each half here trying to get it even or so. 
And so you're, what the two cups are trying to do is you're trying to just loosen it up as this won't get through the sausage stuffer the way it is. So I'm gonna slowly add two cups into this water or into this meat. You can see it's already starting to loosen up quite a bit. That one looks pretty good. So we'll move on to this guy. I've got some high temp cheddar cheese I'm gonna add in. I'm gonna measure two and a half pounds of cheese. It's about one pound of cheese for 10 pounds of meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out now. And then I'm going to put half of that in there. And then the rest in this other one. So now we're gonna go ahead and mix all that cheese in. And you wanna use a high temp cheese so that it doesn't melt when you're smoking it. So once you have that mixed in, it's time to move to stuffing it. The next step is to get it stuffed. So you can see I have my stuffer here. I have it flipped around the wrong way so I can fill it a little bit easier. Once I fill it, I'll flip it back around. So you just kinda wanna create a couple balls here that you can put in there. It seems a little sticky, so I may have to add a little bit more water. But we'll see how this stuffs. This stuffer can hold about five pounds, so I'm gonna have to do this a few times. Like I mentioned previously, I'm using this these 21 millimeter collagen casings. One thing that I notice with these is th these casings don't really fit that well with this horn. So you kind of have to do, and it's a little bit of a pain, but it's not terrible. So you just have to slide this end on, open it up, slide the end on like that. And then since that won't fit like that, see it, it won't go on, you just have to feed it off and you can tighten it down to the horn there and just keep tightening it so you can get as much on here as possible. So once you have as much as you want on there, you can cut that off, set it aside and Go ahead and get started. My stuffer has an air valve where you don't have to push it down. It actually pushes the air up and out. So you'll probably hear that. But you want to kind of get it so it just starts to come out a little bit so you don't have as much of an air gap in there. All right, so you can see that's coming out there. So I'm gonna want to tie off a knot here. You can see I've got a little bit of an air gap. I'm gonna just pop a little hole in that and that'll fix it. So then you just start pumping. And if you feel an air gap coming, you know, you can pop it like I just did. You can see that cheese in there. All right guys, so we have about 25 pounds of cased Smokies. We're about to get on the smoker. So I've got my pit boss going here. We're gonna throw them all on the smoker for two hours at 165, then bump it up to 185 for two hours. And we're shooting for an internal temperature of 160 to 165. Then we're gonna take our thermometer and stick it here in one of the middle ones. Let it ride. So I've already taken some off that I've reached an internal temperature of 160. I've got a little bit longer on what's in there. Once you take them off, you can bring them in and cut them. You can also rinse them in cold water to get them to stop cooking right away. I didn't do that this time around. I may try it on the next batch that I take out here and see if I can tell a difference. Usually you want to eat these pretty quickly, otherwise you should put them in some bags and vacuum seal them and freeze them so that they last a little bit longer. Again, this is my first time trying snack sticks. They kind of look more like hot dogs, but they taste good. So if you all have any suggestions or anything that can improve this process, feel free to leave me a comment. Thanks for watching.